damage, in quotable damage, that you've committed ecocide. Uh, and so that they have this mock trial uh, that you can see online. If you Google it, you, 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 can, uh, you can go and have a look at it. It goes on for a, uh, for a long time. So it's stuck on that. And it just shows you how powerful this is. People like Michael Mansell QC who are prepared to give up a lot of their time to run this mock trial. And it's, and it's certainly made headline pages in you know, a lot of the press, Financial Times, Times, you know, the, the, the usual uh, broadsheets all took up on, on this. And because they're saying, gosh, where's this going to, if we have this coming through, you know, chief executives, they get it wrong, they're going to be in front of the court. And they, they could be, but they now much we are losing species as a result of what we are doing in places like the tropical rainforest at a, at a, a huge, a huge rate. Now, the thing is, we don't know how many species there are on the planet. We've counted up about 1.6 million, but there could be anything between 10 and 100 million. We have no idea. We just don't know. Um, but we are losing, we think, uh, up to 27,000 species a year. And, and these, so most of those, we don't even know what they are before they're gone. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, the, so the, the extinction rate is much, much higher than it would be naturally. That's, that's the point. Um, I mean, extinctions do happen naturally, of course, um, but we are speeding it up and uh, massively. And, and the bad news is, if we don't control climate change, and there's no indication at all that we are going to be able to cause uh, um, this whole climate change out, control climate change. If you look at what's happening with all the international agreements, um, we've got nowhere really, uh, and so we're going to see a uh, you know, continual rise, as has been happening, um, in the global temperatures, and if it gets up to 2.5, and now the policy makers are, are sort of taking it for granted that we're going to rise 2 degrees. You know, if we can just get up to 2 degrees, it's not so bad, but then we're still looking at up to 30% of total species numbers becoming extinct. If we go over 2.5, it's 40 percent. This is where we had uh, Gaia theory, which was developed in the sort of uh, early early 70s. I mean, and it's a fact that uh, you know, his breakthrough was a recognition that it is life itself, life on Earth, that regulates the Earth's chemistry and temperature and, chem uh, and, and, and climate. All life is interdependent. We destroy the species. We are destroying the life's um, or Earth's life support systems, and you know. He's, as you know, very, very concerned about what's happening to uh, rises because CO2 is a way you know, that the planet can uh, largely uh, regulate the temperature of, 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 of itself. The original theory was very much that the Earth was completely self regulating. The idea is, is that um, organisms subconsciously regulate their environment so as to make conditions suitable for the continued preservation of life. And I think it's it's accepted by some, not by others, and I think the theory has been kind of modified or, or weakened, some might say, over time, but it's really led to a kind of change in scientific thinking in terms of the importance of biological cycles in climate change. The other thing, of course, is how, you know, what sort of human population can the Earth actually sustain? You know, what, what, what number is it? You know, when, when is it where we're absolutely full capacity, we can't take any more? Well, and some people think we're going to plateau out at about 9 billion. But, you know, if we are to do that, then we've got to look very hard at... Uh, I just want to say a little bit about tea, because it's quite interesting. Now, tea doesn't really fit with wild law, because wild law, you know, it's all about <coughs> being part of nature, working with nature. But, at the same time, why I'm interested in this is, we've got to look at the world that we live in, and the world that we live in is driven by people, accountants, looking at what things cost and, you know, to make decisions on the basis of the, of the economics. Um, what Tiba is saying is, you've got to properly cost the environment. We're going to give numbers to that. We're going to give numbers to, to trees. We're going to give numbers to rivers. A few sort of closing remarks then, um, as to how things, are, how things are sort of developing. In other parts of the world, especially in South America, um, they're, they're realizing they don't want their countries to be kind of <coughs> developed by um, 
big companies and, and spoiled. Um, in Ecuador and Bolivia, they now have constitutions which recognize, it's actually in their written constitution, uh, the rights of nature. Uh, and Bolivia going even a step further, uh, as you can see from this Guardian extract, Bolivia is set to pass the world's first laws granting all nature equal rights to humans.